Johnny Bravo, I did watch Johnny quite Bravo. a bit. I loved all the sexy girls that he would come across and hit on. Like, how did I ever think I was straight, honestly? I remember playing like RuneScape and that was my first like game where there was a lot of other people. And I immediately just got kind of like shit on for like being new at the game. I wish I could tell my younger self Hey, these girls are putting you down because they're threatened by you and they don't want you to look prettier than them. F them. Wear and look however you want. Hated Jimmy Neutron with a passion. <laughs> Why did you hate it? He's an ass. He doesn't <laughs> learn anything ever. Sound sync for me real quick. Sound sync for Damien. Well I'm kidding. Done. I don't need to. I don't need to sing. Well done, Damien. Thank you. Thank you. I think, did what I just hear day. Kevin? Was that, Kevin, get out of here. Kevin, get out. Stop it. Go on, get. Go on, get out of here. Don't you see we can't keep you anymore, boy? Boy. Oh my gosh, I just realized you're wearing your, what are those shirts? Uh, actually, it's it's uh, how much in the world money is it, does it cost? Uh, that's the name of the, the shirt that we made up. But thank you, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't, re uh, oh, sorry, I put my phone on do not disturb. That's okay. I'm assuming that we've already started and that this whole minute and a half is already in. I'd like that very much. Uh, oh, bye bye. Oh, bye bye. Oh, bye bye. Oh, bye bye. <laughs> Kevin's a sure. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin. Uh, oh, man. For I those feel like who the itchiest nose, sorry. No, it's fine. For people who watch or listen, we usually record uh, on our own computers, but then we go through Zoom, and uh, Kevin is sometimes able to hit us up in the chat on Zoom and either remind us. Tell us if their sound is bad, which usually is what he has to tell me. And so, yeah, that's usually what we're referring to. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. hello, welcome to another hello. casting of a pod. Hey. We are Tiz I, Courtney, mayor of Smosh, alongside of my right hand man, Demamin House. Hi, it's me, Demamin House. I am known as friend of Courtney and employee <laughs> of Smash. Employee of Smash. So, Olivia is CEO on Smosh. Um, Ian is president of Smosh. I'm a mayor. What what would the government official position would you like to take for Smosh? I would like to be the viceroy of the principality of <laughs> Smosh's colonies. What is that? I don't know. A viceroy is just some <laughs> kind of some kind of official. Sorry, nice. I'm in like I'm in like the goofiest headspace today. I've been like all over the place this morning. Do you ever just like wake up and you're like, ah, I feel dumb and cranky, like all mm. at once. Like I feel like I'm there. Yeah. I just want to. Like, what did be you honest. eat before bed? I didn't. That's the thing. So I had a very bad stomach last night, and although I ordered some delicious Mediterranean food, it remains in my fridge to this day because oh, I was no. like, "No food for me, not on this day." Did you eat this morning? I did. I uh, postmated some Starbucks as a treat. Um, oh, nice! So, so I had some cafe, and then I had some of their uh, sous vide egg bites, Good. which is a brilliant marketing technique by them because they're like, "How can we just like." rapid fire crack some eggs and like, you know, 20 cents worth of eggs charge some idiot $6. Yeah. Like now I'm I'm that idiot. Hi, thank you, <laughs> yes please. I always get those little bagel balls. Oh, the bagel balls. The bagel balls. They're oh, I wonder, good. wonder whom I do my whom. What's in a bagel ball? Well, it's like an everything bagel, but it's like a little sphere and inside is like this veggie cream cheese. Ooh. Um, What's the like cool. ratio of bagel to cream? Cause I feel it's like- It's actually it could... pretty good. Mm. Um, and I usually, I strategically will bite certain spots. So I'll get some extra cream cheese there and I'll nibble on some bread there. Oh, uh, so it's like I a soup dumpling. You bite it first. Blow on it for whatever reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good like on the way to work treat. Nice. Well, back when we used to mm -hmm. leave our homes. Dude, I used to like feel so good whenever on our way to work, on our way to the office, I would go through the drive through at that Starbucks near me. The workers there are so sweet and friendly and it's not like the annoying sweet and friendly, you know, where it's like it puts a bad taste in your mouth. It, yeah. It's like genuine kindness and I'm like, I'm literally as they're like, okay, you have a good day, okay? And I'm like, yes. Yeah. And I'm driving away and I'm like, yeah, that was so nice. Yes, niceness. And then I, I have a good day. <laughs> I didn't really realize it until you just said that, but I think I define different points in my life by which 
coffee shop I would go to and how the employees were. So before I ever moved like near Smosh Mythical in the first place, um, mm -hmm. there was there was a coffee shop on the way that I'd stop at and it was like just the nicest people. They'd be like so happy to see me again. And they'd be like, no, I'm gonna spell your name right one of these days. <laughs> but they'd like remember the order and all that stuff. And then after that, I started going to a closer one that was a drive-through like you're saying. and. It's, they're very nice, but they did have a little bit of that like saccharine, like, I'm so happy to take your order today. Uh, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know if you are. And it's nice that you're saying that, but like, yeah. you can just give you me the tried. bean water and we'll be, we'll be polite, but <laughs> yeah. you don't have to be like, this is Hot the best moment. Water. Hot bean worder. Hot bean water. You were the first person to ever say that to me. And I, I think it's so funny. That's Hot fun. bean water. Yeah. I'm really excited about this episode of the podcast. Oop. Me too. I, uh, because we're diving into our childhoods a little bit. Uh, we Who asked needs on therapy, Twitter. am I right? I know. It's weird because I've actually been taking this time in quarantining. Like, I still do video chat therapy, and I've been just taking this time to, like, dive into my past and, like, really digging out the issues that have affected me That's today. Awesome. That's huge. It's, it's a lot. I feel like it's also made me kind of extra sensitive in these last few weeks because, mm. like, those wounds are open. Um, yeah. But yeah. I'm getting, I, I think I'm finally at a point where I'm like, okay, I've I've gone through all of that dirty laundry and I think it's good. I don't need to, I can I can go now. I can definitely relate to that. Um, I, I had a lot of rough patches uh, as a young and like a lot of weird, difficult circumstances that mm -hmm. yeah, everybody's got their struggles, but like mine were weird. I feel like yeah, I've dude. done a good job of like capping them and being like, all right, it's that's in the back of my brain, we're good and all that stuff. And I can go through life being just fine. So it's like you're saying, like, do I open the wounds again and be like, mm -hmm. all right, time to deal with this. And what is there to deal with, you know? But I know. I think one thing I've learned is like, you have no idea how much these small things that happened in your childhood affect you when mm -hmm. you're a 40 year old. Like it is even the smallest things like mm -hmm. I realize I have entirely built this entire construct in my head of how I look at everything in my life. But also, it's also the positive things that affect our lives, like mm -hmm. toys and video games that really like, yeah. shape our creativity. I like that. Uh, good segue. Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I do my best. But I'm going to yeah, call so out every like producer-y thing that we <laughs> do here. I'm going to be like, hey, I see what you... <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a good edit. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. Oh, why edit it all? But yeah, so we got questions on Twitter from all you guys asking, basically wanted to know what your questions were or references to things that we had growing up, whether it was video games, memories, uh cartoons you know stuff like that so i'm gonna say toys too i saw a lot of responses about toys so i yeah. might slip that in there too because our notifications were freaking like Poppin', so much and just pictures mm -hmm. a lot of them were just pictures of toys so yeah i'm down to to do some mentions of those as well nice are you ready to get right into it my guy are you ready to get right into it, my guy? Yeah. You are too good at that. Let me try. Are you ready to get right into it? That was my the, guy. how did I say it twice? Wow, you did the same <laughs> thing. You did the same thing twice. We did it. Okay. Did it. All right. The first question comes from at Tropic Be Breezes. At Tropic Breezes. Uh, what were your favorite games growing up? I didn't have a console, so the first game that really stuck with me was The Sims 2. Mm -hmm. oh. Did you play Sims? I did. You know, I, I only did at like a friend's house. Um because mm. my parents my parents were like open to video game stuff like right off the bat. So nice. I remember that like we had like an old Mac and I tried to play like Sim City on that, like the original, I think, oh, Sim City. Yeah. So I was familiar with it there and I really liked the like city building aspect of the game. M my first video game memory was uh I was in Germany still, so I must have been three oh. or younger. Um and my family got a Super Nintendo, which is like really lucky. Like I don't, I can't even imagine like inflation wise how much that would have been a hit to a family back then. So I was really grateful to have it. So I remember watching my sister play Super Mario World, and then when she was done, I would play Super Mario World. And like, wow, I, that I must have been two and a half or three. And then from there, like all the Super Nintendo things, like Donkey Kong Country, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, which I think influenced my love for Dark Souls because it was hard as oh, hell yeah. and very spooky. Star Fox, uh, F Zero. All those games, I loved them. And then 
the first game that was ever mine um, was mm. I, uh, we had a poetry competition in, in my like school system from like kindergarten to uh, high school. And so the first year I did it, it was all recitation. It wasn't like writing anything. Uh, so the mm -hmm. first year I did it, my parents told me that like, you know, if you do a good job, we'll we'll get you a treat. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I had been playing <laughs> this demo disc of Diablo, which was an incredibly uh, mature and terrifying oh, yeah. game. I was five years old. And so my parents, like after I, I ended up winning it, but my parents were like, hey, we wanted to get something for you either way because you tried your best. And I'm, that, which is looking back really lucky. So they got me Diablo. So that was the first game that was ever mine. And it was like, I was like five and it was a very mature game, but I yes, loved it. Yes, it is. Um, how about is you, that Gordley? like with Laura Croft in it, right? No, you're thinking of a Tomb Raider, which is still a mature game. Diablo is the one where like, literally looking back, it's sort of like a, almost like a D&D &D style thing, but it's like a top down, it's an isometric view. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I think I played one of the newer ones. Probably, and it's much more like arcadey nowadays, but back then it was like incredibly dark. You couldn't even really see what was going on Whoa. in the game. And there were just like monsters around you and like there's the walls are covered in pixelated blood and Jeez. horrifying, but amazing and I loved it. How about you, Cordelia? What was your first game? What did you oh, do? Oh man, so my, my household, we didn't mm -hmm. have any kind of console. I think growing up, my mom was very fixated. We were all, a lot of us were homeschooled. Mm -hmm. um, my older siblings were homeschooled up until like middle school, high school, some of them. I was just homeschooled for like the first couple years, but yeah. I was in a way kind of raised by homeschool kids. So I feel like I see fans making edits of like, this Courtney has homeschool energy. And I think That's I do. That's funny. So a lot of our games were like computer games that were like Reader Rabbit. And like I loved math Rabbit. games, right? Yeah. I loved them too. They were definitely very fun, but that was all I had for a while. Yeah. And then when we would visit my cousins who lived in Utah, uh, they had a Nintendo and we played James Bond, Goldeneye. Goldeneye, that was great. Yeah, I was always so bad at it, but I loved it. And that was the only one I ever wanted to play. That was always the game that like, like you, your cousins had. It was always yeah. the game that like every friend had. I did not have it. It was that yeah. and Turtles in Time. Those were the two that every friend had and I didn't. Oh, Turtles in Time, I haven't heard of that one. Oh, it's a it was Ninja always, And I didn't even see the James Bond movies. I didn't even know what James yeah. Bond was. It was just Same. the video game. And then my mom had Sims, the very first one. And okay. me and my sisters, like, cause you know, I had a lot of siblings, so I was always fighting over getting time on the computer. And my mom loved it too, cause she would like do coding and try and like put pictures of people's faces on the Sims, but it was actually Ooh. really terrifying looking. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then my, we finally got an Xbox and the first games we played that I, I love to this day, Halo, all the Halo games. Sure. Um, played so much of that. And then Dead or Alive 3. I've heard you bring up Dead or Alive many a time. I, I feel like it's really influenced you. Yes, it has. Uh, creatively, sexually. You know. I feel like the second one is true for a lot of people who play Dead or Alive. Yes, I did not, but I know. Game. This is a very, even like <laughs> Xbox era, which is interesting because like, how many years are between us, Courtney? Four or five? Five, I think. Five. So that's like, Especially like the 90s to mid 2000s, like there's a lot of technological leaps just oh, moment yeah. to moment there. Like the X, like you describing Xbox as childhood. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. that's interesting. Whereas Xbox for me is like, I'm a little bit older, like preteen. Mm -hmm. Like, so that's yeah. that's funny. I can't imagine what it would have been like for me to play Dead or Alive at that point. I know. Dude. <laughs> Whoa. But my first, my first, like my game. Oh, and we mm -hmm. had dance. We had DDR. We had Dance Dance Revolution. <gasps> Love too. DDR. We had two of those pads. We'd like hide them in the garage. They're in my car right now. <laughs> I have those pads. In your car? Yeah. Well, I don't clean my car very much and uh <laughs> we had done a video with them at defy and oh. so i had put them in like a garage storage unit at some point but then i i just moved again so like now they're back in there and lord knows when i'm actually gonna like yeah. <laughs> pull them out and do anything yeah it's a whole it's a whole thing but it's now they have thing. the space it's gonna be that could like they could like look cool in your in your office or something. I'm literally thinking I want to find a way to put a TV up there and like have a PS2 connected so I can do DDR. And also I want to get a VR headset. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. I, yeah. I think yeah. that's a good idea. Yeah. Um, my, my very first game that was mine, mm -hmm. I remember some other cousins in Arizona were like, oh, this game is really great because you can actually beat it. Cause like I wasn't good. I don't have very good motor skills. So they mm. they're basically telling me it was easy and it was Fable 2. <gasps> Fable, mm -hmm. so good. So good, I so loved good. it so much. The graphics blew my mind at the mm -hmm. time. 
And then I went on to play the other Fables as well. Like Fables I've 2, only I think, done was three. the best one. I've three, three is pretty good. Three is pretty good. I haven't played Fable 4, I don't think. But Wait, if, if then there maybe is I one. played 4. I think I played the, the most recent one, whether it's 3 or 4, and then they just mm -hmm. announced a new one with a teaser trailer. I think there's something to be said, since you brought up graphics, I think there's something to be said about games that go for the fantastical as opposed mm -hmm. to the realistic. Because there was a big push, like take Gears of War, for example. A lot of people love that game for good reason. But when it first came out, people made fun of it for being like, oh, how many browns and grays can we jam into a texture? And it's all like, mm -hmm. bleh, and sad. Whereas with something like Fable, even if you're looking back several console generations, if they're trying to do a babbling brook next to this pretty green grass tuft mm -hmm. of bushes and a fairy meadow, like it holds up and you still get that same feeling of like, I want to explore. I want to feel like. Yes, you, dude, it is so yeah. nice. I remember in Fable 2, I think at a certain point in the game, you'll all of a sudden just start getting like heckled and roasted by this voice that's in the trees. Mm. And for years, I could never find where this voice is going to be like, ha, you think you're good at that? You're never going to blah, blah, blah. And I, I was like, where the frick is this coming from? And apparently it recently, or? it's like some, I think it's like a dwarf or like, 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 like Snow White style dwarf, mm. um, but, or like a gnome type thing. But my little brother recently went back to play it and he found one in a tree and killed it and never heard the voice again. Oh um, my gosh. I love stuff like, like oh my that. Oh my God. Um, That's, but yeah. What stuff. I do love about Fable for better or for worse and anything made by, so Peter Molyneux is I think the dude who originally pitched it and made it. And he's very much like a dreamer. He is mm. the kind of guy that's like, this game is going to change everything. Like, every choice you make in the game matters and will affect the rest of the games forever. Yeah. And like looking back, it's like, no, you choose if you want to be good or evil and that's going to yeah. change the storyline. Yeah. But like, he's such a big pitch kind of person that like, sure, there might be a little gnome in the game chilling in a tree that you can kill. Like, those are the good things that come out of it. Mm -hmm. The bad things the are like the, just the shattered expectations when like, I'm sorry, you were about to start. No, no, no. And that was the first, that was the first game that was open world that I ever experienced. Sure. Dude, open world is my favorite. I do. Within reason, and it's I like to it. To this lot. day. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I I think it's maybe the ADD in me mm -hmm. uh, that is just like, oh, I can go over and do this thing and I can finish that task later. I didn't know you um, had ADD. Um, it's undiagnosed, but okay. it's just so apparent in in my being stimulated and, and everything. I'm sure if I like wanted to to get it officially diagnosed, I could, but it's like I wouldn't want to take medication anyway. Cause I'm just I just prefer not to take that stuff. But uh No, I was yeah. just I was just relating because yeah. like I got the O C D label later in life and it was just like <gasps> it's like I understand why I'm like this now. So Yes. No, um, I yeah, I've had I've had a little bit of that, but with something else that maybe we could mm -hmm. talk about off the podcast. Sure. Um, because it's really odd, but, um, yeah. And then Knights of the Old Republic was another one of those games oh, that nice. I was obsessed with. And it's like, it's so sad. It's also like, I tried playing it recently and it's like kind of a bad game. The story is good, really? but the maps are so insanely large for no reason. Uh, and yeah. empty. What a beautiful time though in gaming where like you didn't have the capacity or maybe we were just young enough, but you didn't have the capacity to be like, this is a bad game, I don't get it. I know. Like you just have beautiful memories of it. Like I remember being a teenager and getting Digimon World for the PlayStation 1. It is universally despised as a wretchedly bad game. Wait, but which game? Digimon World. Oh, okay, um, I was like, what? So, oh no, not KOTOR, not. No. Um, <laughs> So I remember like playing it and having a really hard time and just constantly thinking to myself, wow, this game is really hard. I need to get better at it. Mm. As opposed to being like, this is trash. And I'm like, exactly. what a nice little gift of ignorance. I kind of wish I had that naivete still. I know. And when, when we got to that age where you start hearing people criticizing games like that, I was like, what? Like, yeah. Yeah, I don't understand, but I I kind of do now when you look at certain games and how they're how they're done. But I think I love like it's cool because I was obsessed with Halo growing up, and now there's Destiny, which is like a kind of an open love world it. Halo. It's universe a spiritual game. successor made by it. the same people, Bungie. Bungie. Exactly, Bungie yeah. is great. Yeah, Knights of the Old Republic. I heard that they were going to try and make a a series out of that era, mm, and I was cool. like, oh my god, that would be so cool to be like in that. You ever just like hear about projects that are like literally your soul? 
and mm-hmm. you just wish you could be a part of it, but you don't know how. <laughs> oh, yeah, Courtney, I'm a voice actor. <laughs> That's, I constantly get emails for auditions where I'm like, all my dreams are right in front of me. Am no. I gonna go for it or let it slip? And then if you don't book it, you have to be like, "That's okay, everything's yeah, chill. Dude. I got time." Um, oh. <laughs> oh, what was I gonna say? What right before the project thing you were talking about? Um, I still Republic. Oh yeah, that's always been sort of my problem with Star Wars in general, and it's gotten better. I like Star Wars a lot, but I'm not a fan that gets like upset about things if mm-hmm. something is Same. off of my expectations. I don't care, but yeah. I get why people do. Um, But I think Star Wars historically has been a very much like a tell, don't show kind of series where like someone will show up and they'll be like, that's General Parkus. Don't you know? He did the beat bop run in 48 bleeples. And he once battled all the bleeples. (laughs) And I'm like, show me the battle with the bleeples and show him doing all that stuff. They just like show a dude in robes like, yes, you have heard of my tales. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, there's only so much that you can do and still have me go like, "Uh uh-huh, so I guess he's really cool. I can hit it. (laughs) So I'm trying to think of other video games. I mean, Final Fantasy was huge for me. Yeah, that's Um, right. Love Final Fantasy. And it was my sister's game. So I remember it being the kind of thing where it was like, I was never allowed to play it at first because it would be like, no, you're going to overwrite her saves. You can't do that. Mm -hmm. But my sister and I had our own individual memory cards and so I remember one day being like hey I now have enough knowledge to know how this console works like I'm gonna go ahead and play this game if that's cool because uh, this is nothing to do with her memory card and changed my life um, hell yeah I also was of the age to rent Super Nintendo games from Blockbuster oh um, which Blockbuster. was so many bad games so many good games god I miss it god I miss Blockbuster that was the coolest store it's really sad that it's not a thing anymore I mean I get that the business model itself was kind of not the best but the fact that you could go into a store and like literally plan an entire weekend like the snacks the candy the mm-hmm. movies the video games the posters like the toys were all there loved it uh yeah. it was a party going to Blockbuster. I remember if I heard my mom was going, I'd be like, oh, I wanna go with you. Uh, Mm -hmm. Same, I would always be like, oh, can I come? And can I pick something out? Like, yeah. It was such a fun place. We used to have one really close to me. Same, same. It's gone now. It was one of the few places I could go on a on a bike. Did you did you like bike around your neighborhood and stuff? Yes, I could have yeah. biked to Blockbuster. I usually bike that's to funny. Uh, Carl's Jr. after a sleepover. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I never did food stuff as a kid, but it would always be like, do you want to go to Kmart and just look at the yep. toys? Like, Yep. Okay, mm-hmm. so yeah, I guess that kind of carried into the next question, which was at the Pixel Punch saying first video game memories, perhaps. So yeah, I hope that answered the question, Pixel Punch. Oh, this is a cute one. This isn't so much about games or anything. This is from at Chelstagram. And the question is not to be cliche, but what would you tell your younger self? Do you have anything in the barrel oh, yeah. ready to go? I mean, uh, there's a it. lot of things. I mean, there's also things where this is actually one of the things that I was working through in therapy was like growing up, the popular girls would kind of shame anyone that tried in terms mm. of looking cute. And and like I had been friends with those girls in elementary school and into middle school. And every time I tried to like curl my hair or wear cute boots or dress up like they would kind of heckle me and tease me about having curly hair or wow why are you dressed so like that for just school what the hell like when they're obviously dressing so nice and so pretty you can see pictures of me all through like senior year junior all through high school I was always wearing hoodies jeans or like track pants and and like maybe a razorback like tank top similar to this. And if I curled my hair, they they just like would glare at you. And it was that very sucks. subtle sometimes. And they would be like they would like laugh at a girl who once would like to wear high heels sometimes. And so like to this day, I have a really hard time looking pretty at things where I don't need to look pretty like oh, VidCon Courtney. and stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's fun. I can dress up and it's a show and it's a good time. But yeah, like I ultimately I dress for comfort and it's and yeah. not just physical comfort, like emotional comfort. So I wish I could tell my younger self, hey, these girls are putting you down because they're threatened by you and they don't want you to look prettier than them. Mm-hmm. Them wear yeah. and look however you want. What weak humans they are. Like absolutely. I, I straight up pity people who like can't raise themselves up so they keep others down. Like that's the lowest form of like, I don't know. It's just, it's just so animal to me. It's not human. (laughs) It's crazy how like people need to shake the idea. Like other humans don't exist for you. 
Like yeah. we are all existing in our own space and we mm -hmm. can all do whatever we want with our own space as long as we're not hurting anyone. Exactly. And like, yeah. So I, I even to this day, I struggle with I, I own skirts. I rarely wear them. I own nice high heels and boots. And I did have a period of time where I would try and wear those sometimes. But then I'd be like, I feel ridiculous because I'm like, wow, some someone in the corner is going, wow, why is she trying so hard? Like that mm. is that voice that I was always afraid of. And Damn. I wish I could tell, yeah, my younger self, hey, it's okay. Yeah, that's that's really sweet. I'm sorry you had to go through that. It's all right. I think it's just like I think a lot of girls, unfortunately, maybe went through that. But what, what about you? What what what, you, what would you tell younger you? I was trying to think, um, and I feel like I've answered this question before, like it's uh, in some interview or some something. But honestly, today I kind of feel like it may be a cop out answer, but I don't think I I don't think I would do that. I don't think I would say anything because mm -hmm. for all my struggles, all of, and this goes for anybody, like all your mental turmoil, anything you go through, it does make the person you are. Absolutely. And the mistakes very much included. So I don't know what my life would be like had I had any extra knowledge. True. Um, and I like where I'm at now. I really do. So if anything, if anything, I might um, say something to the effect of like, hey, you have OCD, you need to like, lighten up a little bit and learn that like it's okay to stray off the straight and narrow every now and mm -hmm. then. I can relate to that in a not so much an OCD sense, but I get that. And yeah, ultimately there are no regrets in life. Yeah. But I mean, if I, I guess I would frame the, the question more so like if I were to find someone who's clearly on the same path, I I lately really wanted to like I've gotten more and more intrigued by coming becoming a high school film teacher because I just wow. really want to help kids like that, mm -hmm. like that are dealing with that stuff. And also just giving them good taste in movies and games and stuff because we we have good taste, I think. I think so. Yeah, I think I've had the I've had the like fantasy of being a teacher as well. I think my fear is that like I think a lot of teachers start out super gung ho mm -hmm. and happy and mm -hmm. then like the meanness of youth just beats it out of them. Yeah, dude. Like, I, ah. I believe it. And you're not getting paid enough. So how can you feel happy about anything? <laughs> but yeah. I would hope that if it's an elective, I would feel okay. Yeah, but I think I like that answer though, that you wouldn't tell them anything. It makes sense. Thanks. The next question is from Chloe DT. 100 or chloe dt 00 favorite childhood cartoons and did they shape the type of humor you have today yeah i was i was a big nicktoons and cartoon network kind of person um mm -hmm. didn't ever do the disney stuff to be honest with you which is why it was so ironic that i ended up working on the disney channel but nickelodeon stuff i loved um the angry beavers i loved invader zim which definitely influenced my humor it's it's Dark as hell for a children's show. Cartoon Network stuff, I loved Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Courage the Cowardly Dog, again, a spooky, funny show. Mm -hmm. Dexter's Lab was like, uh, for me. Yeah. Um, loved Powerpuff Girls. Um, oh, yeah. Hated Jimmy Neutron with a passion. <laughs> Why did you hate it? Oh, it just is so nestled in that uncanny valley of like, everybody looks horrible and disgusting. Disgusting, and their the heads are it's horrifically misshapen. Past. Yeah, it's just there's no shading on their bodies, and his head is the size of a peanut, and also somehow a, like a medium sized dog. Um, <laughs> and he's an he's also we can curse on this podcast. He's yes. an ass. He doesn't <laughs> learn anything ever. He's yeah, just like, no. that's my latest invention, Goddard. And then he ruins everything <laughs> for 30 minutes and then wonders why everyone has a problem with him. And I'm like, I hate this kid just as much as oh the God. villains his do. His voice, what was his voice? Ah, Goddard, what are we? <laughs> what do we have today, Goddard? It's, it's I think Brain blast. And like the voice actress who plays him is great. She's awesome. I just, I hate the character. Yeah. How about you, Courtney? <laughs> what? What well, I, I, I watched a lot of Spongebob. Yes, um, how could I forget? Yeah, that's classic. I think I think Nickelodeon just and Cartoon Network definitely did cartoons better. Mm -hmm. Definitely did cartoons better than Disney. Johnny Bravo, I did watch Johnny quite Bravo. a bit. I loved all the sexy girls that he would 
come across and hit on. Like, how did I That's ever funny. think I was straight? Honestly, how? Um, I don't know. Because <laughs> when you're a little kid, you probably have like ideas and thoughts and feelings, but you're not sitting down and contemplating like, so sexuality is a river that I'm rafting down. What yeah. Do I like, you're like, that's exactly. a spectrum. Let me think about this. I'm three, you know. Yeah. I loved I loved Dexter's lab because it totally reminded me of my relationship with my siblings of like, don't touch my things, <laughs> stay out of my space. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? I actually loved Jimmy Neutron at the time, though I it, I was huh. bothered by the proportions. <laughs> they're, um, they're nightmarish. <laughs> they, they, when they had to try like, um, romance stories between these children. Uh, it felt weird. It definitely was like, this isn't, I don't believe this. I don't know why I liked it so much. Do you know why um, they, uh, they canceled it? Why? Because the same studio, uh, spent a bunch of money to work on a film called The Ant Bully, which was equally oh, hard to right. look at. And it was, was a, a cinematic movie. failure. Uh, it also made no money. And they spent so much and lost so much on it that the entire studio was like, well, we're, we don't make cartoons Amazing. anymore. Um, which sucks, but. I do remember um, the Jimmy Neutron movie, which was kind of iconic from what I remember. That was okay. That was okay yeah. for me. Um, but yeah, the animation. I, for one, I remember Fairly Odd Parents was a good concept I love that and one. great story. But the, Timmy's voice, I just remember, I think I've told this story before where I would. I would be watching George Lopez till three in the morning and then I'd mm -hmm. fall asleep and then wake up to Cosmo, Wanda, and I hated yeah. his voice so much um, that That's it was hard to get past sometimes. Because the voice actress is also in literally everything you've ever heard ever. Oh, so I'm sure. Because like, I see the pictures of like, I voice all of these mm -hmm. characters and that's like everything I've ever watched. That's funny. Um, do you remember that show? I don't know. Maybe it was on Disney. Uh, like about being 16 and it was like a group of kids at the mall and they would just always sit at that table and drink smoothies and like talk about drama. Oh, wait, are you talking like Daria? Not Weekenders, not Daria. I think it was um, called like 16 or something um, where know. one girl worked at like a lemon booth and she sold, it was like kind of like a hot dog on a stick. Why does that sound so familiar? And they're always at the mall. There was one skater dude, like the girls were pretty and. This might be the generational thing because this is yeah. after my time, but are you talking about Total Drama Island? No, but that was the same animators. Um, okay, well, because that's what I'm like. I I did that missed me entirely. In the meantime, while you're thinking of that, I want to give special shout outs to like the weird Saturday morning cartoons, like mm. the one Saturday morning recess. Recess was really good. Mm, um, the weekenders, yes. which Kevin just typed, was really good. Um, oh, the the sh Kevin just sent us a message, y'all. Yeah, court. Says, the show you're talking about is called Six Sixteen. Oh, I've never um, even seen. That. I'm showing the picture in the video right now, but uh. Yeah, like the number six and then teen. And it's it was so, it's kind of cool how the cast is like pretty diverse-ish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just like a bunch of cool teenagers at the mall. <laughs> I think that's probably the kind of show that you didn't watch as a teenager though. You watched it yeah. as maybe like a 12 year old in excitement for being like, yeah, I'm an older kid. I'm watching this older kid show. Yeah, it's like when you're like a little kid and you get your first Barbie. Like clearly this mm. is an adult female doll it's that was super controversial. But you're talking about Saturday morning cartoons, sorry. No, that's totally fine. In fact, I, I got so excited to talk about it, but I can't really think of any anymore. I, I will say Doug was better on Nickelodeon than the Disney version slash Saturday morning cartoon version. Mm. Even in being in Germany, uh, watching the Saturday morning version of Sonic the Hedgehog, not Aww. the not the Toon Disney one, not the like, whoa, chili dogs and whatever. It, there was like a very like gritty one that was kind of dope and I nice. loved watching that. Yeah, I never I never got hugely into Sonic cartoons. I but like sometimes you just turn it on and be like, what is this? And you like yeah. watch the episode and then you move on. Teen Titans. Teen Titans. The original was good. Teen Titans. Especially when it got like really dark sometimes mm -hmm. with like Robin and Slade. Slade. Yeah. Dude, that storyline was mm -hmm. incredible. I loved their group too. Yeah. Um, and I I gotta say, I kind of hated the the relaunch where like where Raven was like this cutesy character. Really upsetting, really, really upsetting. They're doing a really good job with that show though. The difficulty is that they, they're they suffering from their own success as a franchise mm -hmm. because the first time they nailed the style for like people to watch like teenage versions of DC superheroes and like mm -hmm. care about it even if you don't care about superheroes, they flipping nailed it, they did it. Mm -hmm. And Teen Titans Go, the new one could have on its own been just as good and just as fine, even though it's an extremely different style. But now you can't help but compare the two. And if mm -hmm. you truly love one more than the other, you're always gonna have this little bit of a, mm, just a little bit of a rub, not yep. feeling it. 
Um, yep. Speaking of dark shows, there is one more. Uh, oh, Kevin's asking about in, in Invader Zim. Invader and it's dark Zim. Yeah, humor, I never, which is I never got into Invader Zim. It was just a really dark show that was made by a comic book writer that had previously done like only very adult comics. I don't, I don't know if they were. I don't think they were like sexual, but I think it was just the humor was just so dark. And how did it shape my humor? I think my humor was already kind of there. Um, but I was like, oh, this show is is here for me. And, you know, finding humor in the darkness of things. And like the show would frame humans as being like these horribly gross creatures. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of funny to be like an angsty teen and like laugh at that. But the thing I did want to say before uh, Kevin had suggested that, which is in the same vein, this is going to be a generational thing for us. Did you ever know the show Mighty Max? Mighty Max sounds really familiar. I might have talked about it before. Or maybe a No, like this, I think but I'm going to look it up. I just um, like, so I just it like was it was an older like Saturday morning cartoon back in the days where a, a lot of people don't know this probably this generation cartoons used to be made in conjunction with toys at the same time so oh, that you could sell yeah. those toys. He man, um, he exact. It's exactly the same thing. So Mighty Max was the quote unquote boy version, and I know that's not what we would generally say, but that's how they marketed it. Uh, the boy version of mm. Polly Pocket. Um, so they would sell oh, these little play yeah, sets I where you could open little... it up and yeah, it's like a little dungeon. You'd be like, you, I'm yeah. Max. but it was about this kid that got a hat that, and it was a very special hat that had these amazing universal powers. It's like the hat of power or something like that. And it warped him to this crazy D and D style world, um, where he's, his, um, his companions are like this huge barbarian guy. Uh, I think his name was Victor. And then this like foul, like bird man, um wizard thing but it's so dark i remember Whoa. the last episode i'm gonna spoil it because it's from like the 80s <laughs> early 90s everyone dies wow they, they fail they fail and the the thing that they leave you on is the last minute the hat sends max back in time so that he can start the whole adventure over again and it's kind of like stuck in a time loop Whoa. that ends with his friends dying it's like what well, this is for children Holy smokes. Oh, I loved it. So good. So dark. Crazy Infinity War stole that premise. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. It's uh, the, the Time or... Machine by I think H.G. Wells that was definitely came from oh, Mighty yeah, Max. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, I have to look up who did the Time Machine. Yeah, H.G. Wells. Okay, cool. I'm not dumb. I really loved, actually a weird cartoon that I was super into, but only existed online or unless you found the DVD. Or sometimes if you bought the doll, you get the DVD with it. Because um, I was super... Already. Well, it was a kind of girly thing. Um, it was my scene dolls, which were so Barbie was a thing, right? Mm -hmm. And then this other company came out with Bratz, mm -hmm. which was um Huge. like kind of for older, like like more preteen kids. Um, and then so Barbie tried to come up with Flava. What's your flavor? Basically copying <gasps> what's your Bratz. Flavor? Dude, Tell toy me what's companies your were flavor? low key yeah. savage with their copying of each Absolutely. other. Um, but then Barbie came out with my scene, which was like kind of like Bratz and Barbie were married together where it was the same height and Barbie doll, but their lips were bigger and their hair was more voluptuous and multiracial cast. And like they had these movies on Barbie.com because you could go, go to Barbie.com and then you could switch to the Polly Pocket side or the my scene side and you could watch animations and cartoons of these 16 year olds that somehow go to Jamaica by themselves. I'm like, so Before the time of happen. being an influencer. No, it can't yes. now. But, I mean, yeah, I guess yeah. you're right. But yeah. yeah, so I was very much into those cartoons. They had like a jamming in Jamaica, they masquerade, all these crazy That's little cool. cartoons that came with the dolls. Did yeah. that, was that a success as a toy? Because I know Bratz just blew up because Bratz like you blew said- blew up. Bratz was, was definitely more diverse because like with Barbie, it was like, oh, don't worry. She has a black friend. Whereas with she Bratz, has it's like, brown hey, hair. whatever you look like, that is the normal. Yeah. We're no, they, advertising all of this. Like There was straight yeah. up a very strong period of time where being a brunette was diverse um, because Lord. like straight up in, in uh, like the whole cast of my scene, you couldn't even tell like this one girl, her name was Noli or Nole and was like, is she Asian? I don't know. You kind of mm. just, it's like they made them like on androgynously different looking. Interesting. Just like playing it as safe as so they possibly could. So it was like, could. it was made by like a boardroom of like white men probably oh, without consulting definitely. anybody else. And like all the, all the boys, all the, they had the weirdest names like Sutton and like, like, Sutton. like 
that dude plays him. lacrosse. I've never even seen Absolutely. Sutton, and that dude plays lacrosse. And he had a shell necklace. Oh, we all sweet. did, though. Uh. Speaking of toys, um, were there ever any toys that, like, maybe even ones that you didn't have, but just, like, 90s toys or early 2000s mm -hmm. toys that you just see commercials for that, like, stick with you to this day? Yeah, dude. The immediate one that goes to my head is the robot dinosaur that could move by itself and walk around. Is that Zoomer Dino or your Zoomer Dino too recent? Let me see. Okay. But what were you saying? I remember there would always be these like, not board games, but like self-contained games, like Bullseye Ball, where it would be like, go, there's a trampoline on the whatever, and you've got to throw these balls to get him, but make sure you do it before the timer or you get sprayed. Yeah. And be like, water, ah! But then in reality, <laughs> when you play it, it's just like, dink, dink, ah. Semi like that's <laughs> it's never as cool as the, the like, commercials were so epic. They were like they wanted you to feel that adrenaline of like open up mouse trap. Good luck, you know. Yeah, just, dude. <laughs> For me, so it was called the Robo Raptor. Um, Robo Raptor. I'll show you the picture. Please. Do no, it. no, I don't want it on eBay. Don't want it on um, eBay. Get it out of there. They were like this. Oh! I'm showing a picture to Damien right now. It's like oh basically looks God, like a robotic raptor, and. I just thought that was the coolest thing because we couldn't have pets. We had our cats, but then they got eaten by coyotes and then I oh couldn't even have anything else Sorry. after that. Those were the coolest. And for real pets, I always, yeah. just, animatronics were always so interesting to me. Mm -hmm. So like having your own animatronic <gasps> pet was the coolest thing. You just blew my mind. I think the first one of those that was like readily available during our childhood was that dog with the like almost emoji, like LCD screen eyes or LED eyes. I can't even remember what that was called, but like, holy crap. Yeah, um, dude. They My favorite cool. was also Beast Wars. Did you ever Beast, do Wars. Beast Wars? It was made by Transformers, except they were all animals. Cause I don't care about like, this oh. one's an 18 wheeler. This one has 16 wheels. Yeah, no. Instead it was like, this is a cheetah with a water gun. No, oh, this I is a I polar bear those. that turns into a bat. And you're like. I think we had, I think my brothers had the cheetah. Oh, um, the cheetah was great. Cause you could actually fill it with water. Um, yeah, I can't and, like, remember. Laser people. So I had Barbies and I was super obsessed with Barbies. And then my older brother and he had G.I. Joe's, like a ton of them. Wow. He had so many. I think because my mom loved them too. So like if she <laughs> liked them, she would buy you a ton of them. So I would mix those with my Barbies and stuff. But then also my little brothers had hundreds, I think, of Hot Wheels cars. Hot Wheels were where it's mm -hmm. at for sure. Like those Did they have the tracks? Yeah. Yes. We build crazy tracks. And then there was this even, there's a movie, the entire movie is on YouTube uh, called World Race. And it was like these really weird looking cars with superpowers and you had to race and about. you go, you have to go 300 miles per hour in order to activate the portal. And then you go into this different world that has That's this track, dope. but it's all on YouTube and it's so, so dorky. That sounds but, amazing. Do you remember yeah. which uh, tracks you had for Hot Wheels? I remember I got the like uh, the car wash one at a garage sale, and oh, then yeah, I had Crisscross Crash, where you just make the track in like a four leaf clover pattern, and it's like they're gonna go until they yes. don't, and then yes, they hit each we other. Had yeah. that one. You got Crisscross Crash. Yes, so good. Guys. Chris got Chris. And then like my dad, when you get like the thing that speeds them up, that's the coolest little device. Yeah, the crisscross crash one was like, I remember it had a dial for the amount of speed that you wanted. And if you wanted it like too fast, usually it would just fly straight off the track and probably hit something. And then a parent would yell from the other room, like, what was that? And you're like, nothing. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I think the biggest disappointment one I had was called Metal Molder. Um, it was another one where it was just like an awesome like commercial of like people hammering things with metal and it's like you can make real crap out of metal kids and yeah, you know dude. they'd show like oh cool I made jewelry like a cool skull ring and so I ended up getting it for Christmas and it, it didn't work like I guess my version was broken but like you would get these like little pellets of like quote unquote metal. I think it was plastic. Um, <laughs> and you would like pour it into these molds. It was like an easy bake oven, but like for future blacksmiths, I guess. Wow, that's <laughs> was, awesome. Yeah. God, I never I never had the easy bake oven. That was the one really? that my friends had. I would be like, oh my God, that's I always kind of wanted one. Just like so weird. They're like basically microwaving little baby cakes, I guess. I don't but it's, know. A, it's not even a microwave. It's done with like a 10 watt light bulb. So it's like, oh yeah, I would love to make a tiny cake over the course of eight hours. Yeah, it's <laughs> it took fun. a while. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So let's, let's go to this next one. I'm gonna go to this one with, uh, from at 
C.E. Carentit instead. What are some of the movies you watched at too young of an age? I remember watching things mm. like Predator and Seven when I was a child, which probably explains why gore, gore horror has no effect on me as opposed to suspense horror. I mean, I didn't really have any restrictions when it came to movies Damn. and ratings and stuff. Um, yeah, my parents were dope. Oh, my God. Um, but I mean, if, if there was like a nude scene or whatever, they tell me to like close my eyes and all that stuff, mm -hmm. which is probably why I thought sex or anything mentally relating to sex was bad for a very long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. It took a long time I'll for me to be like, it. oh, it's not actually bad. You just had to close your eyes because you were a kid. But yeah, I remember like we would watch our movies and I was always there for it. And maybe I'd play a handheld game at the same time, but it was like family mm. movie night. And so I remember, I don't, I don't even remember what the movie was, but I remember hearing my teachers talk about something one time and I like overheard them and I walked over and I was like, oh yeah, I saw that movie. That was good. And they were like, I don't think your parents would let you watch that one. I'm like, no, then this happens and this guy's there. And they're like, do your parents know you watched it? I'm like, yeah, I was, I was like with them. It was a good, can we talk about this? Like adults that we are, <laughs> like, you know, I was oh that kid. Oh my gosh. Like, yeah. How about you? I, what what was your situation like? So I was very restricted to actually like very restricted, even like mm. we had this weird thing on Sundays. I wasn't allowed to watch TV or movies or anything as, mm. unless it was like the Book of Mormon stories that were weird, weird cartoons basically explaining the Book of Mormon and the Holy Bible stories, which mm -hmm. I wonder if I like went back and watched some of those, like if there was anything weird or not okay but a lot of them was like oh lying is bad like stuff like that or like david well, goliath okay. like weird claymation yeah lying's fine lie lying's fine. whenever just lie yeah. but i remember watching mars attacks when i was way too young yeah that was a good one that one was weird and like still kind of when I think back on it it was really scary to me yeah i think i was a little scared of that one actually just because the Weird yeah, and then I wasn't around. allowed to watch really like scary movies ever mm -hmm. because my mom, my mom instilled in me, and I think I've mentioned this a little bit, where it's like you can't watch those and humor the idea of dark spirits in your home because dark spirits will be in your home. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of pressure. Mom. So I wasn't really watching scary movies until I was in like my late teens. Even then, I like maybe what was your watch first a thriller. One? I remember the first like scary movie, but it was a thriller. Was The Knowing that Nicolas Cage movie? I don't know where if I know that one. It's so weird. It is so weird. I can't even explain to you what's happening. Basically, the world's ending and he like somehow knows it's ending. Then I think in high school, I finally watched The Ring. Uh, that one film was scary. Class. Wow. Yeah. And then like, the which one's the one that's like seven days? That's The, the Ring. ring. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. And then like I watched Signs. I think Signs when I was really little freaked me the out really? and I had nightmares and couldn't sleep for months and was just like scared of aliens wow. coming. Yeah, I think that one was the one that turned me off from scary movies for years and years and years. And like, so I still to this day, I can't watch them alone. Even like murder stuff, I'm like kind of okay with, but I'm usually, I have to watch with somebody. It's usually the opposite for a lot of people because like, you know, believe in what you're gonna believe in. Some people do acknowledge, you know, ghost spirits, they are real or could be real, mm -hmm. um, but murders are definitely real. So I know a lot of yeah. people who watch something with like a goblin or a monster and they're like, eh, who cares? And with the murder, it's like, yeah, people mm -hmm. are evil. They can do that. Yeah, I don't know why I, I like, I would rather watch a murder movie than a ghost movie, even though one is much more likely than the other. Yeah. Well, maybe it's because you already deal with the possibility of like, that's a real dark thing that mm -hmm. exists in the world directly in front of your eyes and it's, you know, demonstrable and all that mm -hmm. stuff. So you already have sort of walls built up to be like, I can, I deal with this all the time. Whereas like ghosts and stuff, your imagination runs away and you don't have the toolkit to actually rationalize. Like, well, if there was a ghost, I would just, you know, do it. Yeah, like those, those spooky f***ed up video games where it's like there's ghosts in the halls and you open a door and you see a face. I'm like, no, sir. Mm, I see clips okay. of those on Twitter and stuff. And I'm like, absolutely, fruitly, no. Do you know which one you're talking about? Because I kind of want to play it. I love horror stuff. <laughs> I, I don't know. I really do. I'm like so disinterested when I see those clips that I don't even want to know what they Got were. It. The only time I ever could watch someone play them was PewDiePie because he was so silly. I was back literally about to say that, Courtney. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, Cause I, uh, that's the whole reason I found PewDiePie. Cause mm -hmm. he was playing some like terrifying Japanese horror game for the PS3. Mm -hmm. It was like Blood Parasite or something. Yeah. It, was, 
it was horrifying and I loved it. And I was like, who is this guy? This yeah. is fun. And I would always watch yeah. his like funny moments comp compilations. And it was okay. always so much of those spooky. So that's probably why he I did. don't know what the games are called because they're always like you know, a compilation. He was famous for doing Amnesia, The Dark Descent, where mm, like, yep. he'd like have a, a statue he'd call a Stefano and he'd be like, Stefano. And mm -hmm. that's where like barrels, barrels. barrels yeah. <laughs> Stefano. Oh God, those old days. The, those were the days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think in terms of movies, I was fairly restricted. And when I finally, I think it was like when my parents got divorced and I had a different support system in my life at that time, like new... Like my dad was seeing someone who they were married for a while and I still consider her like a member of my family because she was like mm. an awesome stepmom and was basically the one who loosened, helped loosen the reins on my life of like I was allowed to wear, I wouldn't be allowed to wear this shirt, like stuff like that. But uh, when she, we were with her, like then my dad, I think more of my dad was the careless one. So like then we were allowed to watch Super mm -hmm. Bad or Pineapple Express, all those movies, but those That's were later funny. on. I'm trying to think of other vivid movies. I watched, I had so much Disney shoved down my throat and I, I can't I don't really complain but uh because since my grandmother was an animator for forever which is so um, cool. so I had to watch it um it was do you it think like, it also came from like was that a safer bet from your mom that like you can watch Disney because we know Disney's okay or was it still yeah. your dad letting you no that was from my mom my mom had a lot of dictation like she probably let me buy fable 2 because she liked the artwork on the cover um, but like she, she didn't, she wasn't a huge fan of Harry Potter because of the magic. Mm -hmm. Um, cause that's like not real. I know a lot of people, I, cause I grew up in Georgia, same thing where people be like, you're allowed to read those books. And I'm like, what is, yeah. what is life like for you? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's No disrespect, so, but like, wow. So odd. Uh, a lot of stuff I had to watch was like educational or whatever she wanted me to watch. So sorry, that just unlocked a memory because mm, we what? were talking about video game stuff. I think I had one before Diablo, even though it wasn't really? like mine, but um, my dad would play Doom or Doom 2 on the computer Doom. every night or Duke Nukem or Wolfenstein, all those like, uh, you know, first person shooters, like very primitive ones. Um, he loved those. And so I'd watch him every single night. It was like a very special ritual. And then uh, as I got a little bit older, probably starting like five or six, um, I would like play after he was done. I'd be like, can I try? Like, can I do it? And I remember like, I had some neighbors that were pretty religious and they were like shocked that I could play that. They'd be like, you actually play those games? They're devil games. And Dude. I remember, but I remember being so surprised by that because I didn't have the scope of understanding of like why people believe what they believe. And I always yeah. knew to be respectful, but I didn't, I just didn't get it. And I tried to like reason with them by being like, well, no, in this game, you're killing demons. You are defeating the devil isn't that a good thing and they were like no it's the imagery and i was like i don't okay well i don't get it but you know yeah and no again if that's how someone feels that's how they feel but i just didn't yeah. have a toolkit as like a six-year-old to be like oh yeah you know i agree i have i have weirdly vivid memories of my older brother he would play like games where it was like you're in a swat team and it was like a mix of video and like i have no idea what it was called oh. but it was very strange like just hunting for someone in a house that was under Wait, arrest or, did like, your brother play night trap maybe that was the game that like made there be game ratings because similarly like again you're watching these like girls have a party and you're in the police trying to stop the killers by looking at different cameras of like actual Maybe. like uh, video footage and stuff but it was like a it was like a political thing where i think some like senator was like there's a game where you're trying to trap women in a house and it was like that's not what the game is about and yeah. they're like no we need to get this out of the hands of our kids they're going to do drugs cuz of it and <laughs> i'm so thankful that we were raised with this technology and with these things around us mm -hmm. because we, with with being able to understand them, we are not those people. Like, because because these people don't yeah. understand something, they are opposed to it. And instead of wanting to understand it, they just think it doesn't make sense. I wonder if we'll ever become those people though. I wonder if there's gonna be a leap in technology where like we, without even realizing it, we just sort of miss the boat. And I don't mean like in the next five to 10 years, I mean like if we're 50, 60. Yeah. I mean, I hated TikTok when it first was a thing. I was so yeah. opposed to it. I hope that we never become those people. I like to think that we're just in general very open-minded people. So mm -hmm. we'll at least have that in our advantage. Uh, and like yeah. being tech savvy that we could at least try and figure those things out. But I think we're also in the age where like, 
consu- consumption, a lot of it was surrounded around kids and like fun stuff. Games was about kids. Whereas all those kids have now grown up and these adults are playing video games and video games are all about like older people playing them. And we have disposable income now. Yeah, Whereas like exactly. before it would be like, you know, and even, even at best you're marketing to their parents. Yeah, it's so a new age. So it's all sort of pointed at adults in a way, which is exactly. Really the one exactly. thing that I think is bizarre though about that is when I was a kid and I played whatever game I wanted, the most I'd use the internet for would be to like look up cheat codes and that would be fun. But there mm-hmm. wasn't that social aspect to it. Whereas I remember playing like RuneScape and that was my first like game where there was a lot of other people. Mm. And I immediately just got kind of like shit on for like oh, being no. new at the game. And I'm like, there aren't too many interactions in life or too many situations where like a 10 year old and a 30 year old would be like on the same plane and playing field. And so mm-hmm. it's it's interesting where like socially you're like, how does that affect people? Like kids over Xbox Live are toxic as hell. Like where's that coming from? And what's that gonna do to the psyche? Yeah, like, I mean, that's still like a thing. Yeah, in Rust and stuff, there's just like toxicity oh, in, yeah. in the gameplay. Did you ever play it? Or it wasn't even really something you could play. Or maybe there was games, but I never did them. Did you ever hear about Gaia Online? I didn't do Gaia. I did Ragnarok. Um, I don't know Ragnarok. Similar, similar. Gaia, for those who don't know, it was like a very, I'm sure tons of weebs played it and, and used it. It was basically where, it was like Club Penguin, but with none of the games. You just were this pretty anime character that would walk around towns and like chat with people. And then there was forums and people would role play and stuff like that. And that was my first time ever seeing anything like that. Gaia and Ragnarok, I'm looking it up now, they basically look the same. That's crazy. Yeah. And then Club Penguin, I was very into Club Penguin. Um, wow, I didn't do that one, Neopets I did Neopets. A bit. Neopets, yeah. What, yeah. Was your, what was your Neopet? Or- um, there was a unicorn that I loved very much. Mm-hmm. I don't remember the names, but I, I always tried different ones and I, I was I was not very good at maintaining them because like I wasn't allowed to go on the computer very much. So they would always be famished and mm-hmm. <laughs> things like that. My favorite one was, uh, I did the Griffin at first and I think it's oh, yeah. just Griffin, um, but I ended up switching to Akara. Cool. Akara was cool because it was a little like, it was like a little cat looking thing, but it had yes. like these tendril ears. Oh, I do um, remember, I do remember. But there was like a really thin lithe, cat looking one with tendrils. I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the fluffy <laughs> one. Like, I feel like for Neopets, they would end up designing like three different concepts for the same one. And then mm-hmm. some executive would be like, great, print them all. And you're like, well, no. This oh is, my gosh. This is the tendril cat. They're like, no, we got three tendril cats. Get them out there. <laughs> oh my God. All right, we're running a little short on time. <gasps> no, I'm so, having so much fun. I know, this is good stuff. Good childhood stuff. Like maybe we can do more episodes with other people on Sorry if and I've talk talked more about it. Too much. No, no, no. I've just been so excited to. Absolutely not, my guy. So the next segment we have planned is a new segment that's basically called "What I'm Watching." What I'm watching. We okay. watch things. Want to know what we're watching? Oops. Know what I'm watching. Open FaceTime. Hold on. I am gonna not say a show. Actually, no. Oh, there's so many things. Um, say I've them been, all. I've been hooked on a YouTube channel lately called mm. Extra History. Ooh. Um, it's a. It's really fun. Um, they've been doing it for a few years now. So it's like really sort of rudimentary drawings, but fun and like a lot of personality to just sort of, they'll they'll basically narrate in a very digestible way something that happened in history that maybe you just need more context about. Nice. Um, and they'll just like show and like act it out with these little like, not quite stick men, but like. Is it cartoon animation or? It's not quite animation. It's like, they might do like little like bits oh, here cool. and there, um, but. I, f- I discovered it like maybe a month or two ago where I like was just sitting around. It was like midnight, but I wasn't ready to go to sleep. And <laughs> I just thought to myself, I don't know enough about Hawaii and I'd like to. And I don't really know about its history before it was like straight up ruined by. Mm-hmm. And fetishized. <laughs> and yeah. fetishized by yeah. European culture and American culture. Yeah. Um, so I was like, I'd like to know about this. So I just Googled like history of Hawaii. And then like one of the first things that, that came up was like the legacy of Kamehameha, who was the uh, oh. person that sort of unified all the islands to make it Hawaii. 
as like one unit. And it was just like a four part series. And I was just like hooked. And I was like, this is great. And then the next one I clicked on was like, yeah, right. Then the next one I clicked on was like about Mansa Musa, who was like the richest man to ever live ever. Like even by today's standards, the richest person, like he would travel and just by tipping people change the economy and like make there be inflation. Like people would kind of be mad when he visited because they're like our entire economy is in shambles because you just dropped our yearly GDP in like a minute. It's just like interesting because I'm like, I missed out on that history because I, you know, I'm of European descent and I feel like a lot of American textbooks really focus on that. So it's like a black man was the richest man to ever live. Like that's awesome to hear about. And then um, I was like, I don't know enough about the Byzantines. So right now I'm like learning about Justinian and uh, that's really cool. Like there's so much good educational stuff on YouTube that isn't like it doesn't I don't know why I got such a bad at- emotional attachment with with educational stuff growing up, but like there is some really cool stuff. Shane has showed me a lot of different things of like this is what happens if you drink an entire bottle of soy sauce. Uh, like mm. weird, weird stories about like this man got a Seven Eleven hot dog and it it was it spread a virus through whatever. Like weird stories like that are real history like that. But I want to I want to check out what you're watching as well. Yeah, really extra fun. history, extra extra history. history. My YouTube has been kind of garbage. I always watch on my TV, mm-hmm. and it's like harder to navigate. And I it swear sure to God, is. I watched one drama tea spill video, and my homepage is literally a okay, because I use mm-hmm. lo-fi hip hop live streams a lot, mm-hmm. and then I watched one f- drama video. And now it's like, it's literally like live stream drama, live stream lo-fi drama, tea spill, spill, here's the tea drama, like all these different channels. And I'm like, God, I don't, now I don't even want to go on YouTube anymore. So I need to to vet it. It's it's so interesting how long the apps have been out for things like Xbox, PS4, phone, Mm -hmm. and how difficult it still is to navigate. Um, We'll get there. I think it's hard because you can only do so much with a controller, you know, and with Mm -hmm. a remote. Yeah, the, I I haven't what really you been watching? watching. Yeah. yeah, I haven't been watching like a ton. I've been in a weird rut where I just watched. I've been watching a lot of Netflix. I love that series. It's a series called Glow Up, where it's like basically America's Next Top Model, but it's like with makeup artists and being given Ooh, a, a that's prompt cool. and and doing like crazy, like oh, you need to do this the makeup for this play tonight on Broadway. Okay, now you need to do this editorial um, photo shoot, and it's really cool because I love makeup. And then there was Next in Fashion, which was like a, a fashion. I did watch Next in Fashion. One. Yeah, so good. And I'm sad I they're not it. making another season. I think it was probably because it was too expensive and probably exhausting for people. But it was that was really good. I also think it was kind of weird the way they did teams sometimes. Like I feel yeah. like every they wanted drama, but in reality, I would have just to have liked to have seen yeah. more cohesive ideas. And there were there were teams that were like, oh, these people know each other and they're they mm-hmm. seem great. And then there's people who literally met the day before and like that was their downfall. And they, they had polar opposite other. like styles Yeah, where someone's like, well, I want something a little bit more reserved. And then someone else was like, I would like there to be a sparkly cheetah pattern. And if yeah. we could have fire coming out of it, that'd be great. And I'm like, well, yeah. that's not, those two don't, that's not going to work. Yeah, it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah, but it was good. And then I've been trying to watch um, more movies that I've been putting off. Like I finally mm. watched Silence of the Lambs for the first Ooh, time. Ooh, nice. That was really What'd cool. What'd you think? I, I thought it was amazing. I I mean it was scary and super intense and luckily my friend was staying with me who had been social like distancing quarantining and stayed with me for the weekend and got to watch it with her and I'm just like oh I'm like is she gonna die and she's like can't tell you I'm like God <laughs> um oh um, yeah was, was she like a, a great big fat person God yeah. or like oh do you know what you God, look like to me with your, your good movie. bag and your cheap shoes so good like a so robe. good so good yeah and then last night I watched Twelve Years a Slave oh wow how a was that random a random watch it always was a very sad movie but it like hit me really hard this time around because you know. <laughs> I saw this tweet the other day. A tweet was like, white people calling the protests everything going on right now. It's like, God damn it. Wow. <laughs> it's so yep. Yep. Yeah, with the protests and everything going mm-hmm. on right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. And there you go. It hit a lot but harder. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just because we're in a huge awakening right now. So that movie was like, it just seems 
even more insane mm -hmm. the way these people were treated. Anyway, yeah, yeah other That's than that, I haven't been watching a ton. Sorry, one more thing, go, go, please, um, please. specifically relating to that, because um, I've always been really interested in uh, Haiti and Haitian history as well. Mm -hmm. um, watch the extra history on Haiti, because it's okay. incredible. It is the only uh, successful slave revolt in the history of recorded history. Wow. And so they break down like how it happened and why and what all the social classes were in Haiti and how the French Revolution and American Revolution both affected Damn. that all at once. But I think it was there that I saw like a like a chart for like how long slavery had been going on Jeez. compared to like how yeah, long it wasn't. Dude. So like it was just it's just it's really eye opening. That's why I've been digging history more and more lately is just give me yeah. that give me that context, that sweet context. Well, I think uh, that will conclude this segment of what I'm watching. You know, I'm glad we were talking about history because I think we're going to be learning about someone named John's history in this episode of Shoot Dude. Hey, Co hey Courtney, that was that was a good that was a good segue. Thank you, thank you very much. <gasps> Shoot, dude. 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 Shoot Dude, and for those of you who don't know what a Shoot Dude is, these are basically viewer or listener submitted stories that uh, provoke a Shoot Dude. They're basically embarrassing moments or yikes moments that that really suck that they happened. Uh, so we're gonna read these stories um, and we are going to determine if they are indeed a Shoot Dude or something else. Mm. Are you guys ready? Damien, mm. would you like to read it or would you like me to oh, read it? Oh, I can, I can do it. I don't think I've read one before. I don't think I've, I, I didn't read it. I like to be surprised, so please read it. From John, I was just in a call presenting two weeks of findings over the course of half a dozen meetings. I was sharing my screen to go over a spreadsheet as a group. I always remember to turn off things like push notifications and other personal apps. However, I forgot something this time. I was talking to the clients on another monitor and I saw them start cracking up. Unsure what the issue is, I just kept going for another 10 seconds or so. Eventually, I turn to the screen I'm sharing and see an email notification saying, your receipt from Manscaped. I quickly Aww. closed it and then pretended it didn't happen for the remaining 30 minutes. I have a pretty thick skin, and so I'm already laughing about it, but it sure felt like a shoot, dude. Oh my gosh. Courtney, would you say that's a shoot, dude? I pretty, I think it's a pretty mild shoot, dude. If it's it a mild shoot, shoot, dude. dude. It's a, it's yeah. a shoot, dude. It's a shoot, dude. Oh, oh shoot, shoot, dude. dude. Because I obviously it's embarrassing if people laugh at you for anything, even if it were something that you're super proud about. Yeah. But like manscape, let yourself yeah. be however you want to be, hygienic wise, yeah. or trim your hair, let it grow. Who cares? Men, women, non-binary. Right. Who cares? Do your thing. Live your life. Honestly, I feel like if I saw that, I'd be like, oh, all right, nice, cool. Yeah, be like, hey, uh, sir, thank you for the uh, thank you for the presentation. I just want to say I'm glad to know that you keep it trimmed down there. Nice to know we have a well self-disciplined hygienic queen. <laughs> exactly. No, I think that's great. Um, it is a little shoot, dude, though. Anything yeah. personal coming up, especially if you're very yeah. aware about the notifications. And like, you're totally right. It sucks when you're just like laughed at in general, even if yeah. it is something you're just legit proud about. So yeah. yeah. But yeah, I can't I can't say I've ever experienced anything like that. Have you ever experienced something similar? It's not it's not like an embarrassment thing or presentation thing, but I do audition for a lot of things voiceover wise that are mm. like very confidential. Like I have to sign non-disclosure agreements to even receive the email. And wow. so sometimes I have these panic moments where like that's the last thing left up on my screen. So I'll open my computer around friends and then immediately be like, well, oh, hey, nothing is there. There's uh -huh. no new thing from that really cool property that you really like coming out. Like it's just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. I get that. I think the about, worst I've ever yeah. had is like showing a someone something in my camera roll and being like, shoot, where's that other photo? And scrolling past like a few photos that parents don't need to see. Uh, so I think I've done that. Yeah. yeah, just something, you know, or like, why do I have 10 Chris Pratt photos in a row? That's weird. Why do I have wonderful photos thing. in my camera Working roll? That is the thing. Working with social media as part of our job, sometimes you pull down a bunch of photos for like a purpose. Yep. And then yep. you go back later and you're like, this looks really suspect, huh? I could say that my camera roll is very weird. It's a lot of cursed images. And I mean, I feel like that's more common nowadays, but yeah. I'm going to text you one right now and that'll just be for us. Thank you. I appreciate you it. it. You got it. Well, 
This has been a lovely episode of the Smoshcast. It's been quite nostalgic for me. I Same. hope that we sparked some nostalgia in those listening. If you would like to submit your own shoot dude, you can send an email to us at shootdude at smosh.com. That's S-H-O-O-T-D-O-O-D at smosh.com. And ooh, I received the photo. Uh, that looks pretty good from what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a pretty funny meme. <laughs> and then if you want to ask questions for future episodes, follow us on Twitter or Instagram because we... Pr- we post our prompts or questions as tweets or as Instagram stories. And if you don't want to miss them, you can put notifications on as well. But uh, yeah, other than that, you can just pop by to listen or watch us on on any listening apps on Wednesdays and then video apps on Fridays, which is basically just YouTube. So subscribe to Smashcast on YouTube. <laughs> and always remember to go beyond plus ultra. Do your best. Hell yeah. yeah. What is it called? One for all. This was fun, Dame. This was fun. This is the You're most. This is the most you've ever talked to me. I know. We never. No, we we talked more than this. <laughs> Wait, what did what did Kevin ask? Kidding. Kevin said, "Damien, how did this one feel as far as best friends podcast compared to last week's best friends episode?" I feel like we probably got more legit bonding done because I didn't just look up Wikipedia articles about Courtney the whole time. Oh my god! Yeah. Also, no, so this is fun as. Yeah, I like talking about childhood stuff because you really do learn about each other and about ourselves in a way. What, what really makes us happy, so. And I also forget a bunch of, about a bunch of shit. It's also like when you find out something that you have in common with somebody from your childhood, that feels a little more special mm-hmm. than now, where it's like, oh, you like Avengers? Cool, wait, <laughs> yeah. you hated Jimmy Neutron? Oh my God, like <sighs> stuff like that. I hate Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here, shall oh. we? Oh, I thought we were already done for like a no, minute. No, no, oh, we're sh- still, we are still. Still rolling. Please, please cut all of the things Okay. <laughs> Bye. No, I'm serious. No, Deem, please. No, corny. <laughs> corny. Oh, bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye.